Camboy Melon and Aplotar as they go towards the line. Camboy Aplotar still coming on the near side and has lifted it in the last ride. Aplotar and Dalla O'Keefe have robbed Camboy and Melon. Dara, this time last year, you hadn't ridden a grade one winner yet, and you didn't know that you had the ride on absolute hard until quite late. How did that all work out? Yeah, um, even this time last year, I didn't even ride in a grade one. Um, so it was, uh, it was quite a surprise when I, when I um, no, because nobody had mentioned it to me about that the ride might be there or anything. So it was just morning of declarations was literally when I found out, and uh, it was brilliant, you know. To, to and did, you, did, did Henry tell you, or did you just see your name down to ride him? Um, I just see my name down, <laughs> down in him. So it was, uh, it was, it was great. I remember uh, looking at the declarations to see how many rides I had, I had gotten in Leprechaun that day, and uh, you know when I see my name down for the Savile Chase, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was unreal. Like, and you know the race that it was as well. There was mm. like. You know, if 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 like it was like a gold cup, really. You know, so it was it was it was it was great now to get the spin on them. And you hadn't been going into Henry's for long before that, had you? No, I'd been in there a few times, and um, you know, it was uh, it was just uh, my agent Gary Gribben had suggested to go in there, and and um, you know, I've, I I think I had just a handful of rides from previously, and um, you know, as I said, it was just it was it was great the way it all worked out. And the race itself, because of course, Aplutar then we didn't know that he'd stayed three miles. Yeah, exactly, and you know, like there was kind of with Manila Indo being in it as well and stuff. The, like the instructions on on the day, like you know, they were very, very simple. Like he just said, you know, and sneak away around there and and just ride him to come home. And you know, in fairness, there was no pressure or anything. And and um, you know, I set off to f end up following kind of Alaho and and kind of Manila Indo and obviously with Manila Indo fall and kind of early on and Delta worked in as well at the next fence and stuff and. Then, kind of coming down to the third last, I could see that I still had quite a bit of ground to make up in the other two because you know they had, had been jumping well and got into a great rhythm in front, and you know I, I suppose we went to a really good gallop. And mm. but um, no, as you said, my lad, he he definitely stayed on the day anyway. But you didn't you didn't panic. I had a look at the race again this morning, and going to the third last, you were like, and you were what? You were even behind Alaho. Like you were, you were only fourth or fifth there. I know Kenboy and Mellon had gone clear, but you, you were still sitting there. You hadn't gone from there. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose like when, when the instructions were just riding him to come home, like there was, you know, when, when I looked up and I saw that they had gone clear, like, you know, it was too late for me to, you know, to, <laughs> and it was too early to start chasing him then, yeah, you know, like yeah. if I had if I had set sail and, you know, I turned in and he, he had, he, you know, he'd stopped at me, you know what I mean? Like, so um, as I said, I just kept buying my time and, and once I got upside Alaho then at the second last, when when I kind of started squeezing him away, he just started picking up underneath me, and and um, you know, like as you said, the other two, like they, they had kind of built up a lead on us because um, you know they got into a good rhythm out in front, and I suppose with Leprestown, if you've one jumping well as well, kind of down the back the way Melon and and Ken by Warri, they can you can do that, like can't you? So you know, as I said, thank, thankfully we just we just got up in time. And they did like when you turn for home. Did you think you had to wing the last to give yourself a chance of getting there? Yeah, definitely. And like even going down to the last, I was I was hoping that I was going to meet it on, on a good stride. And you know, even like just closer, I was getting to the fence. There was nothing. There was no stride there. So like I said to myself, if if I asked him and he had you know if he'd put down or something, I'd probably lose more momentum. So just left him get in and pop it. And in fairness, he didn't actually lose too much momentum at the back of it. And you know, when I when I got really stuck into him, he he um he put his head down and. You know, he, he galloped well. He galloped really well to the line. And was there a point then in the run-in where you thought, you know, maybe you thought I'm going to finish a good second or third here to maybe I'm actually going to get up? Yeah, like as as I said, now when I when I landed at the back of the last and I and I got a couple of uh, couple of smacks into him, like I, I looked up and I knew like that. You know, I said, "Geez, I I have a really good chance here now." And and um, you know, as close as you're getting to them, then you know you're you're and you're not quite there yet. You know, yeah. it would have been. So it would have been a hard one to walk away from if if you didn't get there, you know. But uh, thank, thankfully we did. But they've gone fast, and it's a fair old pull from the last up to the line at Leprechaun. Yeah, it? there's like it's obviously there's a, especially you know there's a there is a long running, and you're kind of climbing a bit as well, to, you know, to the winning post. So um, you know, as I said, it was um, it was tw I was getting anxious now for to get up, but uh, thank, thankfully we did in the last in the last rides. Oh, uh, you got there. Like, how did that feel? Yeah, it looked was was unbelievable. Um. You know, I suppose I didn't really think about it or anything until a couple of days after. But 
like when when I got over the line, it was just uh, it, was, it was just unbelievable. Like to you know to to get a, a ride in, in in that race uh, at Christmas, it was just great to be a part of it. And uh, you know to get your first great woman, or it's it's just it's 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 an unbelievable feeling. And uh, you know you you definitely like another feeling like that, Charlie. Yeah, exactly. Well, you've come close. We'll go on to that. And of course, there were no crowds at Leopardstown yesterday, so you're coming back into an empty winners' enclosure. Yeah, you know, I suppose that was the one thing that, you know, like that, that was missing, you know, was not having your family or stuff there and friends. But, you know, in fairness, like, obviously because it's, you know, the other horse is coming up for the next race and the, other, the horse is in the race coming back down, like all the stable staff and everything, they were all congratulating me. And, you know, and f when I was walking back in, I felt like there was thousands there, you know, so it was just, it was just in, in um, it was just great to be a part of it. And it was it was part of it, you know. Your, your your momentum started last season. You'd won the December Gold Cup, of course, at Cheltenham and Shannon Street Lad as well. Yes, exactly. And and um, again, like that was another great day. And he was kind of he was kind of my first real big winner. And uh, you know, it was it was great. And to go, you know, first winner at Cheltenham and stuff. And um, there was there was a bit of crowd back at the owners were the owners were allowed in at Cheltenham at that meeting. And you know, it was great to 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 ride a local winner from McWinters as well. And and um, you know. To see the character he is rolling around the mud and everything, <laughs> so it was great, and um, you know it was it was fantastic to get to get a to, go, to get a good winner like that over there as well. Yeah, and that momentum that you generated there, like that that kind of continued throughout the rest of the season, didn't it? Yes, exactly. It's, I suppose it like just a couple of them big winners. It was just you know it's like when you lose your claim and everything, you know you you're kind of you're out there with the professionals then, and you need you need like a. A winner like Chatham Street Lad and at Blue Tower to get to re, you know to get you into the better the better races and quality and everything you know so um in fairness once 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 um once day won for me you know they kind of they really kick started everything and uh, you know I definitely was getting more rides and probably better rides and you know better quality to ride as well so it was you know it was great yeah because um like you were you're Champion conditional of what forty five winners was it forty five yeah but that was yeah. that was a massive haul for a conditional and you you I suppose you 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 got to that point quite quickly in your career didn't you yes exactly and like it was like um, kind of when I rode my first winner I kind of um, in Clarny in July it was I kind of like I I, I kind of got loads of rides then and I was getting you know plenty of winners and stuff like that and kind of then I I fracture my wrist in Gorn um, in October time and I, I missed that Christmas and kind of once Punchtown was over that year I kind of got a couple of winners and kind of from that that summer on then I just you know I was in fairness uh, my agent and Gary Cribben was getting me on you know good rides and you know I suppose when you're claiming and you know you're you're riding a few winners it's it's easy for it's easy for you to, to you know to lose track of the winners then as well you know what I mean because it's all happening quickly yeah. and stuff but um you know, as I said, I wrote out my claim quick and kind of I kind of lost it then and in, in, in kind of just before Christmas and it's kind of hard then, you know, when you lose your claim to to kind of get going again, you know, because obviously you're, you've no advantage then, you're, you're, you're on a level playing field with all the professionals, but, um, you know, as I said, I went a bit quiet then, but thankful, thankfully we got back going. Yeah. Uh, do you think that was a bad time of year to lose your claim? Yeah, like I suppose there's never really a great time to lose. I suppose you know, like when it's gone, it's it's gone. But kind of like when you're riding winners as well, like it's very hard to say, oh, I'm going to reduce the amount of rides I take yeah, or yeah. reduce the amount of winners you take because you know, as everybody knows, you're only one fall away, and it can all be re reduced. In you know, you could be sitting on the sidelines for a few months. So you know, we, my my agent Gary and you know, we never we never kind of stopped when we were at, at the momentum. We we just kept going and. Um, you know, in fairness, even when I lost my claim, I was still getting plenty of rides and stuff. It's just kind of the the winners, kind of, you know what I mean. You're not riding as many winners yeah. as you are, but um, in saying that, like it is in the middle of the winter, and you know all the good horses are coming out and the better races and stuff. But um, you know, as I said, thankfully we got back going again. Yeah, because you you were quite prolific on the pony racing circuit as well. Like you were you're from Donnerail, obviously the home of National Hunt Racing, as you said, beside Mick Winters down there. Yes, exactly, and you know, as you said, mentioned the pony race, and it's a, it's a great advantage for for every you know girl or boy starting out to 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 have that experience under your belt, and um, you know, I suppose it's at the minute there, you know, they're struggling with with sponsorship and everything, trying to keep it going with insurance, and you know, you'd love to see it, you'd love to see it to to carry on, you know, because um, 
I think if you went through all the, the Irish and English jockeys now, I think most of them have the pony racing experience under yeah. their belt. And, you know, even you see their princesses going to Dundalk in the winter, like the advantage they have over someone that has never didn't pony race. And, you know, so, um, you know, it's a great it's a great circuit and, and you'd love to you'd love to see it to, to carry on. And, and a lot of the, the lads you rode against at the time when you were pony racing, they're now professional successful riders aren't they yes exactly and it's great to see you see everyone all like and you know like i started when i was 10 and little did i know then that who was going to turn out of it you know but um as you said it's just it's great and and uh you know it's great that you know i've made friends and i was pony racing and it's great to see everybody you know doing well out of it and um you know it's a great time for 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 you know because when you're a kid and you know, you get to uh, get great buzz out of riding winners and stuff like that, and and um, you know, it was, it was it was fantastic, and you know, I had great help with my parents and stuff, and everyone driving me around, obviously because you know you're only eleven and twelve, and <laughs> like you know, pretty much their weekend was was revolved yeah, around bringing yeah. me to you know, it could be from Glen Bay and Kerry to Donegal or somewhere, you know, so um, you know, it was it was great. Sarah, you, you formed a good relationship quite early with Enda Bulger. How did that all come about? Yeah, end has been brilliant. Um, kind of, it was we were just sitting at home one night, and I suppose kind of when I decided that I was never going to be naturally light enough for the flat, and um, like obviously I knew that because people, you know, you'd hear that how good end is with school and and stuff, and and um, kind of my dad just rang him up then and asked him could I go down go down one morning just to see how I got on, and uh, I went down one, that morning and I I, I just loved it and. Um, you know, in fairness to school and down there, the facilities, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing that I've seen anywhere else, you know, or, you know, I just love, loved it. And um, in fairness, he, he gave me every chance to, to get going. And it's great to have someone, you know, that has been, was a jockey as well. And, you know, is a great mentor as well. And, you know, he'd tell you what you were doing wrong. And, uh, you know, it was, it was great. And he gave me my first winner in, in Clarny. And, um, you know, even to this day now, if if you if you ever wanted any bit of advice, it's it, he's always there. So it's uh, he's just a, a great person to, to 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 be after getting in with. Yeah, and the facilities that he has there, they're, they're quite unique, aren't they? Yeah, look, it's it's uh, when you drive in the gates there to see like the to see the hedges and everything that's just so well maintained, and you know, it's not like you know you go to other places and you you know what I mean. It's just the end is just different. Like when you drive in there and the jumps and. You know the pride he takes and the jumps as well like you know the hedges and the facilities the gallops they're they're second to none and and um you know for the horses as well like the young horses it's it's great education for them but um and it's great you know like even to people that don't want to be jockeys that just want a bit of school and yeah like it's great like he, they'll go down there and he'll give them a chance to do that because you know in some other yards like it's the people that are going riding the horses or it's the jockeys or you know, it does all the schooling, but kind of when you go to end, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You you you'll get a chance to do to do what everyone else is doing. You know, and that that's what I liked about it as well. And mm. you know, it's great. You see loads of people from all over the place. They be driving two or three hours to get in there just to ride out in the morning. Yeah. So you know, that that'll tell you a lot about it. Yeah, and yourself this season, Dara. Like it's been a fantastic season so far for you. You've burst out of the traps. You're leading the Jockeys Championship. It's all going really well. Yeah, it's going great, and uh, we just, I suppose, we just got lucky when, 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 when the race started. That you know, we got a few winners on the board, and and uh, you know, just got a great mom momentum at it, and you know, um, been lucky to touch wood with injuries and everything. So um, you know, it's after a great season now, and I couldn't have asked for any, any more. And uh, forty nine winners last year, and I'm on forty five now. So um, as I said, it's 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 going great, and. Uh, Hopefully, as I said, we, we've had a couple of nice winners and stuff, and, and um, hopefully we can stay lucky. Yeah, and you, you, you've ridden winners and ride for a number of different trainers. Like, how do you, how do you manage all that? Or like, a, who, like a, do you have certain days of the week where you go certain places? Yes, exactly. Like, you try to, you know, you try to go, you try to do everything you can. For, obviously, there's, there's only so many days that, that are in the week with, and with racing as well, but try and juggle it. Um, you know, I try to go to Henry's, Gavin Cromwell's, um, you know, I'd try to do a bit with Tom Gibney. Um, I'd be on the Cora with Martin Brazel. Um, you know, and then you know, if you if you with school and racing or go meet people working or galloping, you know, you'd be always doing something. And I still like, obviously, I still love going into end as I try to get in there a day as well. You know, so um, 
it's uh, it's 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 going it's going well and you know as you said you can juggle it now where if you're riding out somewhere in the mornings you can go to school in the afternoons or you know the, the days there's no racing and stuff so you just have to juggle it but um you know it's 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 great and it's it's good to get into you know different variety of yards as well and and uh, you know because you never know what you what you, what you get out of it yeah and you've got an agreement as well to ride Sean and Bernadine Mulryan's horses yeah that's great and and um kind of started riding for them in, in last February and, and um, in fairness it is, it is great to it's great to have a, an owner like that you know that has 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 um you know spent money with, with, with buying a couple of nice store horses and stuff like that and and uh, as I said I had a few winners from and and um, hopefully over the Christmas period now there's a hopefully a couple of nice horses to run and, and um, as I said it's, it's definitely great to it's great to you know to, to get the call up to, to ride a couple of nice horses as well yeah, have you any hor couple of horses that you're looking forward to riding over Christmas? Sure, as you said, it's 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 still you know what I mean. It's still a bit away yet, and it's hard to say what's going to be yeah. going what. But hopefully, a couple of a couple of um, Sean and Bernadine's horses are, are coming out to run, and Mar Brazil has a couple of nice horses to run, and and um, they have a few with Henry as well and stuff. So um, it's, as I said, it'll all depend on 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 you know what I mean where where they're going to go. But but. Um, Hopefully, as I said, we'll, we'll have a couple of nice horses to ride and, and uh, hope to be great if we could get a winner or two out of it. Yeah, Gabby Natko, you've formed a really good relationship with him. He was a bit unlucky not to win the Drinmore chase the last day. Yes, he was very unlucky and, uh, you know, you're on about grade ones to us, to, to that day in Fairy House. To us, you could to have had two. We could have had two, <laughs> yeah, but look, that's the way it goes and, and yeah. um, I think it's no harm, you know what I mean, when to, to know what the feel of a grade one is like as, as much as it is winning it, to, to know what it's like, but... Um, he was very unlucky on the day. Um, you know, I thought it was a really good performance. Like, uh, like we went a really good gallop, and you know, he's actually he's well able to jump. It's just, you know, a couple of obviously mistakes at the second last, and again at the last. But you know, for him to pick up again after the mistake at the second last, and you know, to give him another chance going down to the last, and to miss that as well, and you know, you would have said after that he was going to finish third, like, and he he still came back and fought back to be second. So. Thought it was a really good performance, and um, I think that you know he's definitely looks like he's after improving at, from mm. jumping a fence, and and um, you know as I said they're novices, so hof hopefully he can he can um, I'm not sure where he'll go at Christmas yet, but hopefully as I said the way he the way he ran it the way he ran in the dream where you'd have to say he'd have a good solid chance wherever he goes. Yeah, because he was a very good hurdler, but he looks already like he's he's going to be an, an even better chaser, is he? Yes, exactly. Like he was, like he wasn't too far behind Bob Ollinger in the the Lawlers and Ace, and like he was favourite in Cheltenham for the Martin Pipe, and he got brought down at the first, so he was very unlucky. And um, you know, as I said, he had a couple of other good runs over hurdles, and um, his 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 chase effort seemed to be, seemed to be good. Like he's doing today in Galway, he he was second. He ran well. Um, he came on plenty from the run, and today he won his beginners. Like that, that was a really good race, and and. Um, you know, obviously he's run the last. It was was rock solid as well. So you'd have to think that, you know, he he, he and he will improve. Like as I said, he has he has the technique. I think he's like he's plenty of scope about him and everything. There's just there's just a couple of obviously mistakes on the day that that caught him out. But um, I thought it was still a really good performance from him. Yeah, and I think Gavin seems to think that he's he'll be better maybe going out and trip a little bit. He could be a three mile horse. Yes, I think he's in, he's in the three mile race at Leperstown and and that and you know he's he seems to be a strong galloper like and you know he, he I'd say he, he is a real steer because you know after making a mistake at the second last like if 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 that had knocked the stuff out of most horses and you know he got going again and missed the last and still got going again you know so um. You know, if he had jumped the second last, well, in Fairy House, he would have still been a couple of lengths clear. And, and um, you know, as I said, I, I didn't feel like he was stopping that day. So um, after going a, a real good gallop, and he seems to be versatile with ground as well. Um, it was it was it was heavy ground, nearly soft to heavy ground today. He was second in Galway, and it was kind of good goodish ground in Fairy House today. He won his beginners and stuff, and the last day wasn't bad either. So he seems to be really versatile with 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 trip and ground. So. Yeah. Hopefully he'll have a bit more luck on his side the next day. Yeah, and your other near miss on the day was my mate Mozzie in the Royal Bond Hurdle. If he'd have jumped the last, he would have taken a lot of catching, wouldn't he? Yes, again, it was it was just one of those days that nothing nothing went right. Um, but uh, no, he he ran a cracker on the day again. Um, I think that probably like the race was just it was a messy race with, you know, Arctic Warrior was kind of making the running and like the, we we didn't go overly quick, but. 
Um, again, like if if it's just the way I went in today, if he had winged the last, he, he probably he probably would have won. But um, I don't think you know he had lost too much in defeat. Only that he was just a bit unlucky, and I think that uh, he should have more to offer, hopefully, for connections when whenever he goes again. Yeah. Do you do anything special in the lead up to Christmas, like, or is it just just another big meeting that you're gearing up for? Yeah, that's pretty it. Like you know, it's it's the kind of the same as as every other week, really. Obviously, that there's better racing and stuff like that, but. You know the routine is is pretty much the same, and that you go to the same trainers, you do the same, same as you're doing every other week. Um, obviously you're getting excited because there's more, there's better racing, and there's you know there's racing on over most of Christmas, so it's it's just um, it's great, it's great. But the routine is the same, and it's just trying to stay out, it's, it's, it's stay injury free, and you know what I mean. Get get to Christmases, you know. So there's um, that's the most important thing. And if you're, you were told at the start of the season you'd be leading the championship going into the Christmas festival, you'd be happy enough with that, I'd say. I would, but uh, you know, as I said, I've been, been fortunate now with obviously Paul and Rachel got hurt. Unfortunately, they got hurt during, during the summer, like so. Um, you know, as I said, it was like, when I set out at the start of the season, I said I'd love to try and get over fifty winners if mm. I could. So, um, you know, and and um, in fairness, I couldn't have asked for a better start now. And and uh, you know. As I said, it's just everyone's doing a great job for me, and I've just been very lucky. And you have no problem with your weight. You'll have a full Christmas dinner then on Christmas Day, will you? It'll be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> I, I um, as I said, it's, I'm very lucky in that in that, that regard that I can eat what I want, and um, it's, it's a huge advantage. You know, it's uh, I'm not one that likes missing meals, so it's, it'll be great. To, it'll be great to eat all uh, the turkey and. Have a dessert after. As well. <laughs> and do you have any goals for Christmas? Get a get a winner on the board, I suppose, and kick on. Get a winner on the board, yeah, it'd be be great. And you know, you'd love to, you'd love, I'd love to get another opportunity in a Grade One or something. You know, to they're the kind of races you want to you want to be riding in and and stuff. But um, you know, over Christmas, it's great if you could get a winner. You know, the first day or two, Stevens' day or the day after. You know, it's it's great, great just to get get a winner out of the way. But um. As I said, hopefully, you know what I mean. We we don't know where you, where I'm going yet or what, what what's happening, but hopefully, as I said, we'll we'll get a couple of chances.